Welcome to Cardboard Box Games. I'm Adam. And I'm Adam. Today we're going to mainly be talking about strategy and combating the evil shadow in this empire. Mm -hmm. And we've got a bunch of other things like our brand new crack a deck. And piece. we're going to talk about the turn tournament we went to. And the tournament we went to. So let's jump right into it. So before we jump into our major topics for today... We got a lot of great feedback on our podcast, and this is episode five. Yeah. And one really of the excited. biggest pieces of feedback is that we need an audio-only version. So that means we need to do a better job communicating what we're talking about, because we're no longer going to be able to do the fancy editing that we've been doing. Mm -hmm. So we're still going to do that. We're still going to make our videos look awesome, but we definitely need to make sure we read our cards more. We have a new website called cbbgames.com where we're posting our podcast, and we've submitted for approval to a few of the different podcast um, feeds out there, so iTunes, Google Music, and we actually are already in Spotify, so you can check out our podcast in Spotify right now. iTunes has not been approved yet. Hopefully by the time you watch this video, it is. Mm -hmm. And also, you can always just go to cbbgames.com and listen to the audio version right there. That's pretty much it from that update. Keep the feedback coming. We want to keep making this thing off more awesome. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to try a Crack-A-Pack version. Crack-A-Deck. Crack-A-Deck, thank you. Crack-A-Deck. Crack-A-Deck makes more sense here. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a, a deck here. And I'm kind of hoping for, like, maybe yeah. Sanctum, maybe, like, with Untamed and, like, maybe Logos. Okay. I think those three are good together. So I'm going to keep a secret like a here. Okay. So the deck's name is Biggs the Gray. Biggs the Gray. That's the interesting name. Yeah. So the first house is Brobnar. Brobnar. That's pretty cool. Is there anything you're looking for in Brobnar, you think? I think a lot of creatures like play abilities with that drummer guy. When we play them and return all Brahmar creatures, that would be a cool combo. And there's, there's actually a rare in here I've never seen before called Tolus. Do you remember what Tolus does? I do not. We'll open it up here in a second and we'll take a look at him. Um, the next house is Dis. Oh, that's pretty good. And I like controlling decks. And I feel like Brahmar can help like take control of the board and then Dis can help like take out any enemies you don't want to deal with. Yeah, so Tolus is actually the rare in the Dis house, which I think is kind of interesting. Huh. Um, and then the third house is... Uh, now, you've got Robin on Dis. What are, you, what are you hoping for the third house? Um, maybe... I mean... So in the Robin on Dis... Maybe it would be cool to have like a Sanctum Robin on Dis deck. Have, yeah, especially if the Sanctum creatures were, like, really powerful. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to look at a couple of the cards that we don't have in there. Okay. But it is not Sanctum. It is Untamed. Untamed. Oh, that's pretty cool. So the deck is this, Untamed, and Brownar. Oh, okay. All right, so the one cool thing that stood out to me right away is that there are two Witch of the Eyes, which I really that's pretty cool. like returning stuff from my discard pile. Um... Uh, so yeah, Rip, Witch of the Eye is a three power untamed creature. When you reap with her, you return a card from your discard pile to your hand. Mm -hmm. And I've enjoyed that quite a bit. Is there a bear flute in that deck? Let's see. There is no bear flute in here from what I've seen. I think that's what it's called. The so bear flute is the artifact that lets you search for an ancient bear. Yes. From the discard pile or your actual deck. Yeah. And you can bring it into your hand. And then once you're done, shuffle your discard pile and your deck together. There is a key charge, which is the action to basically allow you to cast a key on your turn. So you play it, you lose one amber, and then you forge a key right then and there. That's pretty awesome. And I have had that do really well. Okay, so here's Tolus. Tolus is a one power rare for Dis. Mm -hmm. Elusive. Which is that the one that makes points not pick a house? Each time a creature is destroyed, oh. its opponent gains one amber. Its opponent gains one amber? So That's cool. So like basically if you kill a bunch of the enemy's creatures, yeah, you, you get a ton of amber. If your creatures cool. die, they gain amber. 
Um, let's see here. There are two shaffles, which I also like. Oh, so at the end of your turn, your opponent loses one amber. Those are pretty powerful. Oh, look at that. So there's the Drumble creature. If your opponent has seven or more, capture all of it. And we're getting still in this. Oh, that's but. awesome. So the one thing that also stood out to me this is there are two gateway to disses, which are actions in this, where you destroy each creature and gain three chains. What do you think about two of those in a deck? Uh, I think that's too many chains, or do you think... Would you me, I feel like that's pretty powerful. In the tournament... There's this deck that had three gateway to diffs. Really? And he used two gateway to diffs on me. And then it, I just felt like I couldn't do anything. Like, at the beginning of the game, I controlled the board. He couldn't do anything. He used gateway to diffs. I, I, I couldn't do anything. And then he had a bunch of creatures down, and I destroyed all those creatures. And then he used gateway to diffs again, and then I just couldn't do anything, and then he won. So let me show you another crazy thing. So we've already talked about the gateway to disc. There are yeah. two Coward's Ends, which are Brobnar wow. actions. Uh, play, destroy each undamaged creature, gain three chains. You literally have four cards that could <laughs> potentially blow up the entire board. And you could gain 12 chains if you play all four of them. Okay, I feel like that's way too much now. I feel like that's a lot too. Now, I will say, um, let's see, where is it? It is kind of interesting because... There are, like, very few, like, uh, Brabnar creatures. One, two, three, four, five. I guess it's an okay amount. But there are two Gauntlets of Commands, which is that artifact that lets you ready and fight with a friendly creature. And I really love those cards. Two could be awesome. But there's only five Brabnar creatures. But you can use it for any creature. So you'd have to call Brabnar and then have other creatures on the board. Anyway, I... We're going to end up checking this deck out. Maybe we'll try play in it. Um, oh, one other thing. There is a Pit Demon in this deck, which I think a lot of people talk about Pit Demon because it just literally has an action to steal one. It's a five-power creature in Dis. Mm-hmm. And that card is a big monster who literally just takes something away from your opponent. And I've had him work really well. Um, in tournaments because especially if you're playing against smaller decks decks mm-hmm. with smaller creatures they can't deal with it the artwork is the green um, archon it almost looks like a alien from another space planet yeah but yeah with uh, some cool artwork down his chest all right we will try out that deck and uh, if it's awesome we'll tell you guys about it if it's terrible, we might also tell you guys about it. <laughs> but Big's the Gray. I kind of like how short and sweet the name is. Yeah. So let's jump right over into our tournament. So Saturday, last Saturday, we went to a sealed Key. tournament, a Keyforge sealed tournament. The, the showing was pretty good. How many people do you think showed up? I believe it was like 27 people. 27, yeah, because there was an odd number. And we overflowed the area that they had. <laughs> so we had to go in like a special room for reserved people. Yeah, it was it was actually pretty awesome because uh, it just shows like how many people love Keyforge in our area. Mm-hmm. And it was also cool because we saw a lot of the same people that we played. We did, saw the yeah. last time around. So tell me about the decks you got. Well, I got a Shadow... Brabnar Sanctum deck, and my other deck I got was Untamed Sanctum, and I forgot the other one. Maybe Logos, I think. I think it was Logos, actually, yeah. Yeah. Which one did you end up playing? I played with my first one, the, the Shadow, Shadow Untamed Sanctum deck. No, 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 Shadow Brabnar, Brabnar. Sanctum deck, yeah. Yep. And I liked it so much because the Sanctum and Brahmar, I had to control the board the whole time. And with the Sanctum deck, I kept capturing the Amber to stop them. My Shadow part was not that good, in my opinion. I had three ghostly hands, like I could gain tons of Amber with it. But I couldn't stop the opponent from, like, messing up my board or anything. Or, like, stopping them from gaining a key. I really... Did I really depended on my Sanctum creatures to stop the opponent to gain a key because I could capture the opponent's Amber. I had two champion tappers, and that's what I mostly used to stop the opponent. 
And what does Champion Tapper do? I'm trying to remember. Uh, when you fight to capture one Amber, I believe it is. Okay. And it's like a five power creature or something six like that. Six power, power creature. creature with one shield, one yeah. armor. That's awesome. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So what did you end up doing? How, how did you do So I ended up in fifth place. Um, I got a pass on the first round because I was the odd one out. And that's pretty cool. So then I got a free win. In the second round, I won. Oh, it's also elimination. One match. Then Yes, they did change the format. That's yeah. a good point. So the time we played before, it was best of three. Mm -hmm. This one was four rounds and best of one. Yes. So it was actually nicer. I enjoyed it. So uh, I won my second round pretty easily, I think. And then my third round, though, now that I couldn't do anything. The opponent had a Dis and Shadow deck, I think. It's somewhere along the lines, Dis, Shadow, and Untamed, somewhere around that. And he had three gateway to Dis. I already talked about this. I could, just couldn't do anything. I felt like I was in a good start. I had tons of creatures on the board reaping a lot. But then he stole a bunch of my amber, and then he blew up the whole board. I couldn't do anything. And he had a key charge in his deck. Yeah, so it's untamed, for sure. He had a key charge, and on one turn he got yeah, he gained two keys, and then that's when I knew I just couldn't win. So he like yeah. forged one at the beginning of his turn, and then key forged or key charged the next yeah, one. Yeah, key charged the next one. Yeah, that is un unreal. That's crazy. Um, and then what about the last round? Did you end up winning the last round? Last round, yes, I did end up. I did end up. Winning. And it seemed like a quick match because I was still playing when you <laughs> finished that one. It it was pretty. It was really fast. Like I was always in the lead. It seemed like I didn't really have any problems with his deck. He was a shadow and untamed deck though, with Promnar, I believe. But I kept killing his creatures on the board. I just didn't let him get any creatures. And uh, he also, him and I played a practice round, and he had two fire spitters in his Promnar deck, where when they before they attack, you deal one damage, deal one damage, everything. So that is seems really good against Shadow. Yeah. It seems like that would be good, because all their creatures are elusive little guys. Mm -hmm. um, and he had two of them. Then he also had a Sanctum card that let him heal, heal one damage from each creature and gain that much amber. And he did that to me, and that was a lot of amber. Um, so my tournament went really badly. Um, I ended up with three or two houses of the same three. So it was Sanctum... Um, Brabnar and Untamed, I think were my three. Yes, Untamed. Yep. Yeah. I don't know why I can't remember exactly. I know oh, yeah, it was untamed. definitely Untamed. Yeah, yeah it was definitely Untamed. Because I know you had Niffles. I had yeah. no good way to steal Amber, capture Amber. Like, I had no way to control the board at all. But I did have, like, some strong Brabnar creatures. So there were times that I would have, like, eight creatures out, and I'd be reaping. I would gain eight Amber in my turn. And every opponent that I lost to was playing both Shadow and Dis, which is why we're going to jump into our strategy that I've kind of come up with. Mm -hmm. um, so to, to kind of give you a scenario, I had four Brabnar creatures and four Sanctum creatures out. My four Brabnar creatures, one of them was that uh, Dupixi, or um, the, the guy that lets you reap and you gain another Amber. So mm -hmm. basically I can reap those five guys and get five Amber from it. And my Sanctum guys were just the regular knights. Do you, Fairy. Do you'd have, do Fairy, do yep. Fairy. You'd have out there. And I gain, you know, I could gain four Amber. So I had three Amber at that point. And I remember thinking, my options really are spending my entire turn trying to kill two of his elusive creatures. Because mm -hmm. he, had, he had four elusive shadow creatures out. Mm-hmm. Or I can gain five amber. And I went down the route of like, I'm just going to gain five amber. I'm going to constantly gain amber as much as possible. Um, and I just got obliterated. Like, I literally, <laughs> there was one time I had 13 amber. And by the end of my opponent's turn, I was back to three. Like I, Three? Between capturing and stealing and um, that... Bait and switch card, which lets you like steal until you're equal. Mm -hmm. It it was crazy, just absolutely crazy. I got absolutely destroyed, and that was almost 
the way every one of my games went, except for the one I won. So I ended up going one and three. And I did try switching decks, and both of them just didn't play very well. And it got me to thinking. And the reason it got me to thinking mm. was that the deck I played with had a SAS rating of 82. Really? That's pretty high. Which I thought was really high. Yeah. Um, but it performed really bad. Against controlling deck. So uh, after that tournament, I really started brainstorming, how do we combat Shadow and Dis? And I think you nailed it a little bit earlier. And I'm not 100% sure this is going to work. Okay. But I always went greedy, where I would just gain as much amber as possible. Mm -hmm. Thinking that they eventually are going to run out of cards to quit stealing. But as we were driving home and in, during that night, I'm like, what if, what if I change my strategy? What if in that same situation, I reaped just enough to get six amber? Mm -hmm. And I used everything else to start killing off whatever I could, even if it was one creature. Yeah. I literally just put enough pressure on them where they have to stop me, but yet I don't give them all this value. So then they waste their cards, like... Hopefully bait and they waste bait-and-switch and they gain two instead of, like, six. And then mm -hmm. it seems like common sense to me. But I will say, I think in practice it's still going to be hard. Um, I guess, what do you think of that strategy, first off? I think that's a really smart strategy. A couple games, I knew an opponent had um, Shadow and Dis, so that I tried. It's a game I won, by the way. Not the one I get destroyed. I tried to keep at six amber because I knew he had um, a couple cards that can seal my amber. So I tried to keep it at six. I destroyed the board, but then um, he one time made me gain amber somehow. Oh, I don't know how he he's did. got that card that made you unforge a key. Right, yeah. So, I mean, like, if you forge a key last turn... Well, either way, your opponent gained six amber. Mm -hmm. I can't remember what that card is called. But anyway, uh, it's actually pretty cool because if you have, like, a bait and switch, you, like, unforge your key, and then gain six amber, bait and switch you, that is brutal. But anyway, keep going. Yeah, yeah I, I think that strategy worked pretty well. For your situation, because if you don't have a controlling deck, just try to control the board to stop them from getting amber from the creatures. Yeah, because it ended up, what ended up happening, and I think about this in retrospect, and I really think a lot about strategy and how I play these games, and a lot of times I'll do plays just to test out my theory behind it. So my new theory is, when they are a shadow deck, you should do almost everything you can to always get up to six amber. Mm hmm and you should do everything you can to secondarily keep all shadow creatures off the board. Because when they call shadow, you don't want them to get value from stealing mm -hmm. and value from reaping. That's a good point, yeah. The problem comes in is those stupid elusive creatures against my deck that had no way to deal with it. Yeah. So I do think there's just some weaknesses around that. But I do think it would have been more valuable for me to start picking off one at a turn, one at a time. Because that would have kept my opponent from getting Amber for the next couple turns. Mm -hmm. So that that's what I came to. It sounds like you were already there a little bit in your mind ahead of time when you were battling that. Um, and I, I suppose I was, yeah. And, but I think I'm going to do some testing. And I would also be interested to hear like what you guys think about combating Shadow and Dis. Because honestly, right now, Shadow feels like the strongest house. Do you, do you agree with that? In some ways, yeah, it feels pretty strong. But I think, and I'm the one type of person that's like, I think there's a counter to it, and I think the counter is forcing them into suboptimal plays. So you force them into plays where they have to stop you, but they get little value. Yeah. So that means force them to the bait and switch. You have six amber, they have three. But don't leave them any creatures on the board to, to reap with, if mm -hmm. possible. The game has got a lot of variance. If you have direct damage spells, I did not in my decks, unfortunately. Um, but I should have pinpointed, if I did, I would have pointed them right at all those elusive creatures. There is also that Sanctum card that destroys all elusive creatures. Oh, right, yeah. Which is pretty wicked. It does cool. untamed. Wait, it's an untamed card that does that. Is it untamed? I thought it was um, Sanctum. It's untamed. Okay. Because in my Ponder Tula deck, I remember hating that card because most of my creatures aren't elusive. Yeah, we'll have to, <laughs> we'll have to look up that card again. 
But there is a card out there in a non-controlling house. Non-controlling on the shadow and this side. I will say... Um, Brobnar, to a certain degree, can be a little controlling. Mm -hmm. Because you just have these big creatures that can keep you locked down. And they also have ways to, like, steal and make you lose amber. Mm -hmm. Or... Um, deal damage to everything. Deal damage to everything. So they, they can be a little bit controlling, but not the type of controlling we're talking about. The type of controlling we're talking about is amber control in this case. So, And I'd say Shadow by far has the best amber control. Mm -hmm. But you pair that with this. And this is where it got super challenging to me. Because one of my opponents in the last match that I played also had that Lash of Broken Dreams card. Oh, wow. Which... Taps to make your keys cost three more. Yeah. So that got me thinking, what do you do in that situation? So... Do you go up to nine, Amber, or... Yeah, and I... Or... If, or do you force... Do you... So I, here's what I came to. You go ahead and say okay, what you think first. So I think if the... Destroy the creatures on the board, get directly six. So then they have to choose, like, Shadow to stop you. Or, but if they choose this, they get, get any value, though. So, Depending on what's in sand. In this scenario, I'll tell you the kind of the board state it was in. Oh, okay. um, I actually was at, I was at like two amber going into my turn. Two amber, okay. But I had plenty of creatures on the board and some cards that could gain me up to seven or eight amber pretty easily. Okay. I think nine would have been a little bit harder. The, they had three, and one of the ways to get it is they had three disc creatures. One of them had captured three of my amber. Okay. So getting that three amber back was part of my my calculation of probably getting up over nine. In yeah. Red. So my my new approach to that is I want to force them to have to call this. Hmm. And but I also want to leave them with no disc creatures. Oh okay. And this again might seem like common sense, but it really took me getting like completely destroyed to really see the value of making the decision between gaining as much amber as possible and controlling the board. Because mm -hmm. I think I erred towards the side. So when I first started the game, I erred towards the side of just always destroying and keeping the board controlled. And I lost. And then I switched over to just trying to gain as much amber and win that way. And I started winning a lot more. And it actually works really well. But when you play against Shadow and Disc, that strategy does not work as well. So I think you've got to back up and be like in the middle and you need to destroy as many of the disc creatures as they can. Mm -hmm. Be at six or seven amber, and ideally six, because there are things at seven that just really will wreck your day. Understand what your opponent has in their deck, and there are cards that, like, once you get to seven amber, um, it just bad things will happen. There's not. also no rule that say you can't to look at your opponent's list of cards. Yeah, so that's the other thing I got to thinking about and I haven't been doing this at tournaments, is I think I need to grab their Archon card. And yeah, I know that fun. people aren't going to like that. So my, my strategy is going to be like, here's my Archon card. Can I see yours? Like, I'm literally going to start by handing them mine because it'll help me understand how to play the game. Mm -hmm. And I'll understand, like, is their Shadow going to steal stuff from me the whole game? Or is their disc going to have ways to blow up the board and I can just make the right decisions around that? So that's a good point. So anyway, that's what I came to. I want to force my opponent to make suboptimal plays mm -hmm. by putting them in situations where they're not getting as much value. So I get six amber. I kill all their disc creatures if possible. Yeah. They have to call disc if they want to stop me. Hopefully they don't have a lot of disc cards in their hand, mm -hmm. but they for sure aren't going to have disc cards to get value for on the table. <clears throat> so by the... I still think I still think Shadow is going to take a while, and Shadow and Disc combined, it's going to take a while to fully figure out the right way to play them, yeah. especially with the deck that isn't controlling at all, and it's very creature-focused. Mm -hmm. And I would love to be able to go back in time and try my strategy in that tournament again, because I think my deck was okay. I don't think it was like amazing, and mm -hmm. also... Did never got the feeling like I look at your deck when you played against me. Two very non controlling ish decks. Yeah. And your deck like destroyed me. <clears throat> it did. It hit it out yeah. so fast. Um, 
And I mean, it actually backfired on me because I did two damage to everything, and he so ended up healing it heal all. Thing, and, yeah. But again, that goes to knowing what your opponent has in their deck. So, do you got any other thoughts about combating Distant Shadow? Um, I feel like it's mostly like you said, don't go over seven because there's like Brahminar cards too that bring you down to four, and dis Shadow cards that like do stuff to you when you have seven Amber. So don't even or, get seven if possible. Yeah, unless like. Yeah, and this is where it gets hard because there are creatures out that make your keys cost a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I guess in my mind, the way I was putting it is like always get the amber equal to equal to the amount that the key costs now when you're playing one of those decks. It's going to be super hard though because they're going, like if they delay the you turns four in. turns in a row yeah. from getting a key, like you're going to be so far behind. But... Hopefully what happens is they make so many suboptimal plays and that eventually they just let you get a key. Eventually you get your key. Or they can't stop it. And you. if you have a key yeah. charge or you have something like that, try to save up like a power turn so you can actually use that on your turn. Mm -hmm. And I it's sad as I think this is, I think that's almost a requirement to win against those decks. Having a way to form a key on your turn. Yep. I think you need a lot of raw amber. I think you need a good board control, and I think you need a key charge, mm -hmm. which lets you forge on your turn, or that creature that lets you do it, or like one of the Mars things that let you do it. Like any of the ways to forge on your own turn. Yeah, I think it's vital, especially for the last key. That's at least my opinion. So I guess we'll do some testing on the strategy that we have been talking about here, and I'd love to know if any of you guys have strategy for combating. Shadow or Disc. And if you do, please leave it in a comment or, um, cause we honestly, we just love, want to play the game more and learn. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing that we don't talk enough about in this game is different strategies for how we tackle, uh, different houses. And I think we want to do that a lot more. And we're going to be brainstorming and play testing and trying to figure out different things that we can talk about. Yeah. Uh, or theories or strategies that we've come up with in playing a tournament. So, I think that's it for me on the Shadow and Disc side. How about you? All right, I think that's it for this week. This is episode five. If you enjoyed it, please follow us and then let us know how we're doing. Give us some feedback, and we'll see you guys next time. Keep gaming. Keep gaming.